right friends welcome back to capsule number 5 of 28th week and in capsule 5 and capsule 6 we are discussing two important topics the first one is united nations convention on the law of the sea the second one is about the south china sea so capsule 6 is on south china sea so to understand clearly the issue of south china sea you are required to understand what are the rules and regulations as per the united nations convention on the law of the sea right so please look into this slide here china and five nations have got the competing claims on south china sea the five nations are philippines taiwan brunei malaysia and vietnam and please look into this slide this is a south china sea and arbitrarily china is claiming rights up to nine dash line and important islands that is the parasel islands spratly islands scarborough shoal these are into the news recently because china is developing naval bases and developing air strips in these islands and all of you are well aware we have on one side bay of bengal indian ocean and arabian sea and what are the rights to any coastal country we are going to deliberate now and united nations convention on the law of the sea it is the convention which defines rights and responsibilities of nations with respect to their use of the world's oceans and the management of marine natural resources and this convention was signed by 157 countries on 10 december 1982 and after the signing ceremony this came into force in the year 1994 after ratification by 60 members and at present 167 members and european union ratified this convention and please don't forget china and philippines both ratified this convention and if you look at the rights of the oceans or seas you have to understand two important terms one is the territorial waters the other one is exclusive economic zone and territorial waters extend up to 12 nautical miles from baseline and before understanding these two terms you should have clear idea about what is a nautical mile please look into this slide this is the globe all of you are well aware and please calculate the circumference of earth at equator and after calculating the circumference of earth at equator let us look at how many degrees of longitudes are there all of you are well aware the total longitudes are 360 degrees and each longitude that means each degree of longitude can be divided into 60 minutes so the distance at equator pertaining to one minute of longitude is known as one nautical mile please don't forget the nautical mile is the length of one minute of longitude at equator that is a nautical mile and if you convert it into meters it is 1852 meters that is one nautical mile is 1.852 kilometers and if you look at the distances over sea they are measured in nautical miles and if you look at the speed of uh, ships over sea they are expressed as knots one knot is one nautical mile per hour so the speed of ships is expressed in knots one knot is one nautical mile per hour and one nautical mile is the distance at equator pertaining to one minute of longitude which is 1852 meters or 1.852 kilometers and territorial waters will extend up to 12 nautical miles from baseline please look into this slide this is a baseline beyond the baseline you are looking at the buildings and let us assume this as a coastal city and beyond the baseline up to 12 nautical miles is territorial waters so the country or the coastal state will have sovereign right over these 12 nautical miles both below the sea both above sea 
and not only for that for air space also the country will have sovereign right so territorial waters you can say that is part and parcel of nations sovereignty please don't forget and here the countries are free to set their own laws and the states will have sovereignty over these waters and at the same time ships have to be given innocent passage in territorial waters you may ask a pertinent question what is passage passage is nothing but navigation through territorial sea for the purpose of traversing the sea without entering internal waters internal waters are basically which are protruding into the country beyond baseline so without entering into internal waters without entering at ports if the ship is passing from one location to other location that is known as the passage and innocent passage is nothing but when the passage of the ship is not prejudicial to the peace order or security of the coastal state that means without causing any disturbances to the peace and security of the coastal state or coastal country if the ships are passing from one point to other point that is known as innocent passage so in the territorial waters the ships will have only innocent passage and from the coastal area baseline right up to 200 nautical miles it is exclusive economic zone exclusive economic zone is basically the coastal country will have the right of exploiting the resources including fish oil and gas and what i mean to convey is the coastal state will have the right over the resources both below the bed and both above the sea bed that means they can exploit fishing resources they can exploit oil resources natural gas resources up to 200 nautical miles right so if you look at the other aspects of uh, exclusive economic zone foreign nations have the freedom of navigation and overflight not only that foreign states can lay submarine pipes and cables in this exclusive economic zone beyond territorial waters so if you look at the freedom of navigation the meaning of freedom of navigation is ships flying the flag of any sovereign state they should not suffer from interference from other states in the exclusive economic zone portion that means the rights for the foreign ships in the exclusive economic zone area excluding territorial waters area will be the ships flying the flag of any sovereign state shall not suffer interference and at the same time in the exclusive economic zone navy and air force planes can assert their rights to operate over any waters not part of territorial sea so broadly to understand in territorial waters the country will have sovereign rights both below the seabed above the seabed and over flight and in the exclusive economic zone the countries will have sovereign right for resources but in the exclusive economic zone excluding territorial waters portion there will be freedom of navigation as well as over flight right and this is all about the united nations convention on the law of the sea and if you look at important clauses article 17 that is the right of innocent passage through the territorial sea of all coastal states as i have already told you then the right of transit passage through straits used for international navigation is article 38 you may ask a pertinent question what is the transit passage please look into straits like strait of hormuz or bab el mandeb please look into this slide strait of hormuz connects persian gulf with arabian sea bab el mandeb connects red sea with arabian sea and these straits are too narrow when ships are moving from one international waters region to other international waters region or when ships are moving from one exclusive economic zone area to other exclusive economic zone area then this transit passage will be given through these straits and if you look at article 56 as i have already told you coastal state will have exclusive rights for exploring exploiting natural resources above the seabed and below the seabed 
and Article 87 is in exclusive economic zone, all the states will enjoy freedom of navigation, overflight and laying of submarine cables and pipelines. So, in a nutshell, territorial waters will have sovereign rights to the country and exclusive economic zone gives sovereign rights with regard to exploration of natural resources. Whereas, this freedom of navigation and overflight will be there for all other countries in exclusive economic zone area, excluding territorial waters. This is all about United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and other aspects. One is islands. Islands are considered when the land mass is above water and they can sustain human life potable drinking water must be available and then only they will be considered as uh, habitable islands and the rights of territorial waters and exclusive economic zone will be there for the countries with habitable islands. Then islands are rocks when they are visible only during the low tides, no rights. Please look into the slide when the islands or rocks are visible only during low tides, no rights to any country. Then when islands or rocks, they are permanently above water but unable to sustain any human life, then only territorial water rights and no exclusive economic zone rights. And if you look at artificial islands, this is very pertinent because China is reclaiming islands in South China Sea. If you look at artificial islands, when these are formed due to reclamation of land, no rights either under territorial waters or under exclusive economic zone. Right? So, these are the stipulations under United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. And please do join for capsule number 6. We are going to deliberate on South China Sea. Right friends, have a nice day. Thank you.